One of the main themes and ideas that we find in the Gurdjieff work or the fourth way is that of awakening. We must wake up. We exist in sleep, but there is a possibility to wake up from that sleep. So among many other interesting ideas in Gurdjieff's work, particularly that we can find in Uspensky's In Search of the Miraculous, among them understanding humanity and mankind, the universe, creation and all of these things, for me, one of the most interesting aspects of it is the raising of consciousness and awareness and to awaken from the sleep that we normally exist in. And we've just read chapter 8 on the channel, you can find that. And at the beginning of chapter 8, Ospensky begins by sharing Gurdjieff's talk on these states of consciousness. And I've been thinking about how to deliver this information for you in a shorter video, how to sort of make a script and a video about it, but I've been unable to do that, I'm afraid, because there's just so much valuable information in this section, the first part of chapter 8, that what I've decided to do is just read it again and comment in between each paragraph. So I hope that's okay with you guys. What I'd suggest, and if you're interested, you can go back and listen to the first few um, minutes or first few pages of chapter 8. Uh, there's a link above if you'd like to do that, or it's on page 141 if you have the physical book. And I'm just going to read the first 10, 15 paragraphs, comment in between each of them, because this is super powerful and for anyone who's new to the Gurdjieff work, Gurdjieff may trigger some people with what he's saying here because he's arguing that what m most individuals consider their level of consciousness, they're far from it. And uh, it can be quite triggering if we haven't observed ourselves over time, observed the people around us and done much self-observation and attempts at self-remembering we can um, yeah, be repelled by these ideas, we can push back. And again, that's on the individual, that's on us. We need to experiment and verify these ideas. So like I say, I'm going to read these sections out, comment in between them and any more questions or anything else you'd like to hear me talk about regarding In Search of the Miraculous, be sure to let me know in the comments. So that's what we're doing here today. So let's go. At one of the following lectures, G returned to the question of consciousness. In all, there are four states of consciousness possible for man. He emphasized the word man. But ordinary man, that is, man number one, number two, and number three, lives in the two lowest states of consciousness only. The two highest states of consciousness are inaccessible to him, and although he may have flashes of these states, he is unable to understand them, and he judges them from the point of view of those states in which it is usual for him to be. Here Gurdjieff is just laying out a bit of a preface of the condition that we find ourselves in, the fact that there are four states of consciousness, all the world's religions and philosophy will talk about these higher states, and many of them, that is the, the key aim and goal of these religions and um, philosophies, to raise our consciousness and to live as a man without quotation marks, Gurdjieff would say. The two usual, that is, the lowest states of consciousness, are first sleep, in other words, a passive state in which man spends a third and very often a half of his life, and second, the state in which men spend the other part of their lives, in which they walk the streets, write books, talk on lofty subjects, take part in politics, kill one another, which they regard as active and call clear consciousness or the waking state of consciousness. The term clear consciousness or waking state of consciousness seems to have been given in jest, especially when you realise what clear consciousness ought in reality to be and what the state in which man lives and acts really is. Gurdjieff will touch on this idea a lot in the passages to come. He's saying that the, even the terms, the very terms that we give to the second state of consciousness are incorrect because that's not the, that it's not accurate. It's not, it doesn't really describe the state of consciousness which mankind usually exists because if you read and study in Search and Miraculous, we are asleep. We don't have this waking state of consciousness, because we go through life asleep. And now he moves on to the next two higher levels of consciousness. The third state of consciousness is self-remembering or self-consciousness or consciousness of one's being. 
It is usual to consider that we have this state of consciousness, or that we can have it if we want it. Our science and philosophy have overlooked the fact that we do not possess this state of consciousness, and that we cannot create it in ourselves by desire or decision alone. Here again we find out that although it's potential within the individual to have this state of self-remembering, we ascribe it to ourselves ordinarily, and this is false. We don't have this state of consciousness in ordinary life and existence. We have to make efforts, work hard, and gain it again through our efforts. The fourth state of consciousness is called the objective state of consciousness. In this state, a man can see things as they are. Flashes of this state of consciousness also occur in man. In the religions of all nations, there are indications of the possibility of a state of consciousness of this kind, which is called enlightenment and various other names, but which cannot be described in words. But the only right way to objective consciousness is through the development of self-consciousness. If an ordinary man is artificially brought into a state of objective consciousness and afterwards brought back to his usual state, he will remember nothing and he will think that for a time he had lost consciousness. But in the state of self-consciousness, a man can have flashes of objective consciousness and remember them. The fourth state of consciousness in man means an altogether different state of being. It is the result of inner growth and of long and difficult work on oneself. Here we get to the goal and aim of Buddhism, Plat Platonism and all of the religions, that of enlightenment, that man wants to awaken, to wake up. And here Gurdjieff calls it the fourth state of consciousness, um, objective consciousness, enlightenment. You could also refer to it as samadhi or gnosis. And I'm sure there's many other terms from different ideas and backgrounds and terminologies. But like he says at the end there, I'll just read it again, just here talking to you. It is the result of inner growth and of long and difficult work on oneself. And this is why in today's modern life and society, people aren't interested in putting in those efforts and that work, especially if they consider that they have the highest state of consciousness, that, that this state in which I'm existing now is the highest state, and they don't believe there's any more some um, scientific materialist, for example, all that exists is what I can weigh and measure and count, and you say, no, no, there's higher states of consciousness available to humanity, they'll say, Poo poo, that's, that's rubbish. There's no, none of those things, so why would they possibly work hard and make efforts to try and gain that state of consciousness? But the third state of consciousness constitutes the natural right of man as he is, and if man does not possess it, it is only because of the wrong conditions of his life. It can be said without any exaggeration that at the present time the third state of consciousness occurs in man only in the form of very rare flashes and that it can be made more or less permanent in him only by means of special training. That special training could be considered the entire text of In Search of the Miraculous, also Gurdjieff's meetings with remarkable men which will come to on the channel in time, and of course there's Beelzebub's tales to his grandson or all and everything, and all of these texts, Gurdjieff's life work, all of the books that his students and pupils wrote are all towards this, towards the, the special training, and this special training is our life's work, the work, the fourth way, combining the way of the monk, the fakir and the yogi into the four ways, but working on all the centers at the same time in order to wake up and become a man without quotation marks and live in objective consciousness. For most people, even for educated and thinking people, the chief obstacle in the way of acquiring self-consciousness consists in the fact that they think they possess it, that is, that they possess self-consciousness and everything connected with it, individuality and the sense of permanent and unchangeable I, will, ability to do, and so on. It is evident that a man will not be interested if you tell him that he can acquire by long and difficult work something which, in his opinion, he already has. On the contrary, he will think either that you are mad or that you want to deceive him with a view to personal gain. This part I've commented on briefly a moment ago, the fact that if you believe you already have something, then why would you work hard to get that which you already believe you have? And this is one of the, the biggest um, 
obstacles and issues that we continue to come into or, or come into contact with throughout the work and all of the Gurdjieff's um, followers is the fact that the majority of humanity think they already exist in the highest state of consciousness and so they've got no interest in trying to raise their consciousness because they don't believe in the higher states but through observation and verification we can definitely see the different taste in these different levels of consciousness. The two higher states of consciousness, self-consciousness and objective consciousness are connected with the functioning of the higher centres. In addition to those centres of which we have so far spoken, there are two other centres in man, the higher emotional and the higher thinking. These centres are in us, they are fully developed and are working all the time, but their work fails to reach our ordinary consciousness. The cause of this lies in the special properties of our so-called clear consciousness. I believe this is the first reference in the text to these two higher centres, higher emotional and higher thinking. And as we progress through the chapters, Gurdjieff will speak more about these centres and how they exist and function with finer energies, finer vibrations that the organism can create but doesn't ordinarily create and which have to be sort of manufactured through uh, a special kind of energy, if you like, that comes about through self-remembering, but all that will be explained later. That would be too much of a digression to get into here in this video, but as well as the, the moving, the thinking, the emotional and the instinctive, there's two other centers, the higher emotional and the higher thinking, and there's also the sexual center, which is another digression, but uh, just for reference, all of that will be spoken about in the later chapters. In order to understand what the difference between states of consciousness is, let us return to the first state of consciousness, which is sleep. This is an entirely subjective state of consciousness. A man is immersed in dreams, whether he remembers them or does not, does not matter. Even if some real impressions reach him, such as sounds, voices, warmth, cold, the sensation of his body, they arouse in him only fantastic subjective images. Then a man wakes up. At first glance, this is a quite different state of consciousness. He can move, he can talk with other people, he can make calculations ahead, he can see danger and avoid it, and so on. It stands to reason that he is in a better position than when he is asleep. But if we go a little more deeply into things, if we take a look into his inner world, into his thoughts, into the causes of his actions, we shall see that he is in almost the same state as when he is asleep. This can be a very painful realisation to experience in our own work, our own spiritual progress, to realise that even though we're up and about, we're walking, talking, making tea, making lunch, making, having meetings, doing um, high work in the world, intellectual stuff, to, to realise, and Gurdjieff uh, doesn't pull any punches, he sort of says everything as it is, which is very painful for people and why, again, the work and the fourth way is not very popular because it, it sort of cuts to the bone. But when you realise that you are as asleep when you're active in the world as you are in, in your bed, it's, uh, yeah, it can be a very painful thing to realise um, and we must return to this often as we are instructed to in the book and the exercises that Gurdjieff has given. And, and it is even worse, because in sleep he is passive, that is, he cannot do anything. In the waking state, however, he can do something all the time, and the results of his actions will be reflected upon him or upon those around him. And yet he does not remember himself. He is a machine, everything with him happens. He cannot stop the flow of his thoughts, he cannot control his imagination, his emotions, his attention. He lives in a subjective world of I love, I do not love, I like, I do not like, I want, I do not want, that is, of what he thinks he likes, of what he thinks he does not like, of what he thinks he wants, of what he thinks he does not want. He does not see the real world. The real world is hidden from him by the wall of imagination. He lives in sleep. He is asleep. What is called clear consciousness is sleep and a far more dangerous sleep than sleep at night in bed. Another one of these passages where Gurdjieff, like I say, just cuts to the bone. Man lives in sleep, he is asleep. And this is, um, we find this in, in Buddhism, in the teachings of the Buddha, 
desire and aversion and Gurdjieff speaks about there. I love, I do not love. I like, I do not like. I want, I do not want. This is desire and aversion. In Buddhism we learn that we go through life and they're the two main um, things, desire and aversion. What we desire we want more of and when we lose it we suffer and aversion we want to move away from and if we can't we suffer. So uh, yeah, again, it's not the time to digress into the Four Noble Truths and the Eightfold Path of Buddhism here, but if you're interested, let me know and I could speak about that more. But in a sense, it's the same thing. The Buddha says life is suffering because of our mind and our imagination, which is what Gurdjieff alludes to in that passage too. Let us take some event in the life of humanity, for instance, war. There is a war going on at the present moment. What does it signify? It signifies that several millions of sleeping people are trying to destroy several millions of other sleeping people. They would not do this, of course, if they were to wake up. Everything that takes place is owing to this sleep. And now I don't want to get too political, but there is a war raging on the planet at the moment and many other proxy wars going on. And this is what Gurdjieff says. A lot of people will ask him throughout the course of In Search of the Miraculous, can wars be stopped? How do we stop wars? Why do wars occur on the earth? And Gurdjieff ultimately puts it very succinctly and very simply because mankind is asleep and when a large mass of sleeping people are impacted and affected by planetary influences they just end up annihilating one another and annihilating large portions of the population and it's, um, yeah, it is, on, on one side it's very discouraging that this is the state of affairs and that's how humanity is behaving. But if you really internalise it and realise that's what's going on, it can almost be quite liberating because, well, that's what sleeping people do. That's what a large group of sleeping people will do when affected by these planetary influences. And um, yeah, I, I, I can maybe speak about at a later date the difference in um, approaches of Gurdjieff and Ospensky and how Ospensky really wanted to, to change the world and Gurdjieff would just see that's what sleeping people does, that's what humanity does. Ospensky's often saying about psychology and um, oh, how can we help with man's psychology and awakening and Gurdjieff just cuts him short and says, what are you talking about psychology for? There's no, psych there's no psychology for machines. For machines, you need mechanics. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, again, more, more cutting statements from Gurdjieff that we have to really um, chew on and verify for ourselves. Both states of consciousness, sleep and the waking state, are equally subjective. Only by beginning to remember himself does a man really awaken, and then all surrounding life acquires for him a different aspect and a different meaning. He sees that it is the life of sleeping people, a life in sleep. All that men say, all that they do, they say and do in sleep. All this can have no value whatever. Only awakening and what leads to awakening has a value in reality. And so that's where we'll end this uh, video. The next section is uh, begins with the question, how can one awaken? How can one escape this sleep? And so we'll address that in the next video. I think this video is already too long for those of you who are still here, you know. You're, you're who I'm making this video for because it's, it's very important when you are interested in Gurdjieff and Ospensky's ideas, the work in the fourth way, that understanding the different states of consciousness and particularly the difference between sleep and awakening, you know, self-remembering the taste that it has when we can experience it for brief moments and then we fall back into sleep and we do that all over again by making efforts we can have a taste we can wake up more we can cease to react to life and the world and be more present not react and Gurdjieff says there again he sees that it is a life of sleeping people a life in sleep and when we begin to realize this ourselves then we can begin to move through life uh, trying to raise our consciousness and I'll just share before I say goodbye one thing that at the beginning I was a very um, I don't know what's the word very confident energetic young man before I reached um, and met with the Gurdjieff and Ospensky work I was very egoic very um, narcissistic and when I first found these ideas 
for the first two, maybe three years, I was trying to um, proselyze. I was like some preacher preaching Gurdjieff to everyone, even telling people, oh, you're asleep, <laughs> you know, you're a machine, uh, probably offending people a great deal. And uh, I probably was a real asshole um, thinking that I'm superior to other people because I'm awake, I'm waking up, I know all the Gurdjieff, look at my books and da, 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 but it, it's for us as individuals, we, we ha the only way to, to wake up is to make efforts and the only person that can make efforts is ourselves, so only you can do your work and only I can do my work and together of course we can encourage and benefit each other by sharing experiences and uh, I can learn from your experiences, you can learn from my experience so we sort of multiply and there's a, a big um, aspect in the Gurdjieff work about groups which we haven't touched on yet and I'm not sure if I really want to begin a, an online Gurdjieff group, I'm not sure that's the right thing to be doing but I will continue to make these videos. As I say, anything that interests you from our readings of In Search of the Miraculous, there's the playlist and the commentary section. And we'll move on in the next video to how can we awaken and what Gurdjieff says about these things, probably in the same format as this. Let me know what you think of this format. And then I think I'll move on to uh, what we find in the second part of chapter 8, identification and considering both internal and external and I'll just probably speak about them without the text but maybe find some other passages from the other works and bring them into that video so yeah guys let me know what you thought about that format if you have any more questions let me know and I'll be back soon for another commentary video on In Search of the Miraculous and maybe chapter 9 as well coming soon but for now guys take care Watch, awaken, look after yourselves and remember yourselves and I'll see you soon.